Hello, everyone. I'm here with another stream of Pokemon Crystal Clear. Should be uh, pretty chill. I don't know how long this will go. Might be shorter, because uh, it is not chill today. It is 94 degrees here in Battleground. So this is going to come down to how long I can go without air conditioning. It's going to be warmer tomorrow, so probably no stream. Uh, it's Friday. I ended up being off today, so I could have done a Smash stream if I really wanted to, but I didn't want to, so I'm doing this instead. And uh, this was the last thing I streamed. I streamed this a couple days ago, the uh, open world Pokemon ROM hack. And I did a little bit of stuff between streams. Mostly just, I did some grinding. I got, uh, I got Gleam Evolved because it was nighttime, and I wanted to do that while it was nighttime. And I also realized that, uh, you know what? I'm naming a bunch of my Pokemon after friends. I might as well do that for all of them. So, uh, we got Darien the Murkrow and Saucy the uh, Sneasel. All my best friends. Goji, Gleam, Darien, Saucy, Jack, and Shadow the Hedgehog. What a team we make. Uh, so last time, I went out of my way to make sure that I got a full team of six Dark Types, or rather, the five Dark Types that exist in Gen 2. And Jack. Jack's here, because Snorlax is cool. Maria. I briefly toyed with the idea of replacing Jack with, uh, Jack the Alakazam, because you can, uh, you can get... Trade Pokemon. Well, obviously, because everything is obtainable in this game. I would be able to fully evolve an Abra, and uh, Alakazam is, like, really good in Gen 2. But that's fine. This isn't that serious a playthrough. We can stick with Snorlax. I will show off real quick. Uh, while doing the name changing, I found out that uh, it's not just the name raider. There's this... Uh, there's this house in this version that I guess is in multiple cities. And anywhere you enter the house, you get warped to this location, and it has all the uh, it has all the trainers, all all the utility NPCs in it, like the name raider and the move reminder. Which, since we're here, let me double check if there's anything that we want to uh, re-add. Uh. I got Faint Attack on Gleam, so he's got a Dark-type move. What, is, what does Sneasel have? Nothing? Does Sneasel not have any Ice-type moves? It doesn't even have any Dark-type moves. I guess I have to level it up more to get either of those. Maybe. Well, that's not great for now. You know what? I bet I can, uh... I bet I can learn Thunder Punch. Hello. Radio Tower is a landmark. Alright, cool chat. Uh, a bunch of TMs were being sold in Celadon. I wonder if it's the same TMs here in, uh, Goldenrod. Yeah, guy probably sells balls. What is this? Is this the TM floor? No, this is the evolution items floor. Which was not a thing in Gen 2. This is this is original. Cool that it's here. Uh one of the NPCs in that building I was just in is like a tradeback NPC. So if I were to get like a Kadabra, I could trade it to him and just it, it evolve it. Is how that would work. Maybe they don't sell TMs in Goldenrod. Oh no, here it is. This is the TM floor. I remember now. Here are the TMs you can choose from. Okay, good. It's the same batch of TMs. 
uh, return is good if the Pokemon like you enough, which, you know what? Gleam does, because I had to use a, a happiness evolution for that. I'm going to save because, logically, I should be able to give Sneasel Ice Punch, but Pokemon is not always logical. And for the most part, I think these are still the Pokemon Crystal Learn sets. Let's see, Ice Punch. And just because I can afford it, let's get Return as well. What are my, uh, what are the happiness stats? Because I evolved Gleam, I had to do a lot of walking, so they're probably all pretty high. 233, 180. Okay, so Houndour and uh, Umbreon are very high. Houndour is a special attacker, though. Oh, he's got some physical. He doesn't really need the move, though, so I'm good with him not having... Uh... Shadow the Hedgehog doesn't need return. If anything, he should have frustration. either Headbutt or Tail Whip. I'll keep Headbutt just in case I need to use it on, like, a tree, I guess. I think I have a couple Pokemon that know Headbutt, though. Ice Punch. You better be able to learn this. Okay, good. Also, Snorlax can learn it for some reason. I guess he would be able to punch things, but unfortunately, Ice Punch is still a special move. Which makes te teaching it to Sneasel kind of pointless, but it's coverage. Uh, I do have someone who can fly. And I believe... Hold on a sec. How's Umbreon's special attack? Probably not great. Umbreon is a defensive Pokemon, but... Uh, special attack is 35. higher than Sneasel's, as little as that says. Man. Psychic would be just as bad on either Umbreon or Snorlax, but I'm gonna teach it to Umbreon just because uh, Umbreon has no move pool. Snorlax can learn lots of stuff. I could do the rest sleep talk thing with Snorlax, but eh. That's very niche. You don't really use sleep talk a lot unless you have a specific, like, competitive plan. Uh, this is crystal version, so all the, uh... All the, the phone NPCs are still here. Which most of them don't really matter, though. in this version, because, like, the most valuable ones will call you if they have, like, an evolution stone, but we can just buy those in this version. Anyway. We should start doing some gyms, because that's the only thing that's really... That's our next thing to do. So where should we go? Uh, I think... Let's go to the ice gym, because I've got I've got Houndour in the lead, and Houndour needs some leveling. have we done the gyms in? We've only done three so far. 
We did blue. Blue was our first gym. And then we did Erica, and then we did Sabrina. So we're going in a very bizarre order. Are we good? You, you said that the stream went offline. I... It doesn't say that any frames dropped. Maybe it was a network hiccup? Uh, oh, that's right. A lot of ice types are also water types. Uh-oh. Oh, that was awful. Wait, no, it's pure water type. Oh, this is cheating. Send out an ice type. Come on. Growl at me. I don't have a ton of moves on my Snorlax yet. I should probably have, like, a plan for him. He'll be good to have, like, a general attack, uh, physical attack moves if I find, like, uh, an Earthquake TM or something. Aurora Beam. At this part of the country, in this type of weather, localized entirely within your gym. Yes. You know what? This is my fault. If I came to this gym later, these these seals would be dugongs. Stop growling. You know, seal is a late game Pokemon. In Gen 1. I don't remember if you could find it in Gen 2. But it probably doesn't get a lot of moves until late. That was a lot. That was the case with a lot of uh, Gen One Pokemon that uh, you would catch at a high level in Gen One, like Ponyta. A lot of its moves were weighted towards high levels. <sighs> Gleam. I don't want to keep Snorlax out because he's been growled so many times. Pursuit, the stab attack, is by far his weakest attack. 60 power with stab, and it's special. It really feels like they didn't want the dark type to be viable for the longest time. I was talking with the Elf King earlier about how uh, it really seems like in Gen 3, Huntail and Gorobis were planned to be uh, Water Dark and Water Psychic types, and then they just decided not to go through with it. Because they're both pure Water type, but for some reason, Gorobis learns Psychic by level up, which not even Psyduck or Golduck do. Hello, Darian. And while another, uh, I, I, maybe they figured that those two, uh, those two type mixes were already too saturated. Not like pure water is not incredibly saturated. But the two water darks that existed, uh, Sharpedo and Crawdont, were both physical attackers. Like all dark types tend to be. And it especially sucked because water and dark are both special types. Yuji Itadori is Marco Diaz. 
The that's the main character in Jujutsu Kaisen, right? Yuji's the pink hair dude. Use ice types. Stop using seal. Yeah, Jack and I have started uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. We're four episodes in. I'm not impressed, but I'll I'll continue giving it a chance. Uh, it's such a slog. I don't have anything good against water. What would hypothetically be? You know what? Uh, man, at Kadabra is also great for coverage, Alakazam, because it can learn uh, all the punch moves. Are uh, all the punch moves are TMs in this gen, and they're all special. And Alakazam is a huge special attacker, so it can just punch stuff in Gen Two, and it's really good at that. Not that that's a great strategy for competitive, but it's great for single player. took a while to get good. It didn't take a while to, in to introduce interesting ideas, though. Here's my very harsh review of the first four episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen. Are you ready? We have Chainsaw Man at home. There you go. That's, that's my opinion thus far. Maybe it'll change. Alright, do you have an ice type? Please, not seal. It's water type! Gah! What, is it, is it pure water or is it water ice? I can never remember with Gen 1. Uh, it's, I think it's pure water. It's pure water. And it's high physical defense. This was a bad gym to come to. I should have waited till they evolved into ice types. Uh, what do I do? Let's come back. Let's not do the ice type gym. Where where else can we go? Uh, we already did. We already did the ones that Shadow is good against. We did the Grass Gym, and we did the, uh, the Psychic Gym. I guess we could go fight normal. There's no, like, we're never gonna be better than we are now against that. Oh, there's Bird. Oh, Bug. Let's do the Bug Gym. Chainsaw Man was so good, and we got so little of it. Hold on. There's there's extra slow pokes all over the town. Has it been this long since I've played Crystal, or did they just... Did they add slow pokes for flavor? Look, there's one on the rock, there's one on the roof. I don't remember those. Yeah, Chainsaw Man got uh, one, like, 13-episode season. And then the studio is now animating Jujutsu Kaisen, so... More Chainsaw Man coming, maybe never, who knows. One Punch Man is also, like, uh, on a hiatus for who knows how long. Because that had Season 2, which kind of ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger. I don't remember what that studio is now doing, but I, we haven't gotten any word of a Season 3 in, like, years. It might have been the same studio that did uh, Mob Psycho. 
Chainsaw Man is supposedly getting a movie. Well, that's something. I wonder who's animating the Netflix One Piece. Not the live-action one that you think of when I say Netflix One Piece. I mean the animated remake. Which is probably the animated production I'm most looking forward to in this decade. Because, boy, if anything needs a, a more polished, better-paced remake, it's One Piece. I know some people are laughing. I mean that sincerely. It's a, a very well-written series, but it's so unapproachable because it's got a thousand episodes and bad pacing. Ooh. Oh, Nightshade. I don't like that. Oh, Sunflora, that's an evolved Pokemon. Can it do anything to Houndour? An evolved Pokemon. Look at me being afraid of Sunflora. Uh... Uh-oh. Okay, maybe I should have been a little afraid of Sunflora. Do I have any healing items? Nope. Alright. Oh, well, he leveled up anyway, so I guess I can uh, switch. I realize I'm nerfing myself by using a mostly dark team because, A, just most of the dark Pokemon are terrible. And B, I just, I don't have a lot of coverage on this team. There's a lot of stuff that I just can't do. Uh, Skiploom. Does Goji have any rock moves? I don't remember if he does or not. He's gonna get shredded if this thing uses a grass move. I don't know if it will or not. Uh, he does not have any rock moves. Well, I'll try my best. I'll scream at it and I'll smack it with my weird head horn. And maybe that'll do the trick. It's just, it gave up. It's resorted to tackling the rock. Well, that was rougher than I expected a first trainer in a gym to be. I also strictly don't need to be doing this because, you know what? I'm gonna keep Shadow in the lead. I don't remember when he evolves. That's another thing. Most of the Pokemon in this team don't evolve. Uh, yes, Darian. I, uh, I realized after the first stream... Well, shit, I've got, like, three of these... Three of these named after friends of mine. I might as well do the others. So now we've got Darian the Murkrow and Saucy the, the Sneasel. noises when you fast forward. Bug Pokemon are cool and tough. It is nice across Gen 1 and Gen 2 that they managed to uh, cover all of the types. Except for Dark. Dark is the only one that doesn't get a gym. It gets an Elite Four member. It doesn't get a gym. There he is. That's the Dairy and the Murkrow. It's got a cool hat. I should probably teach Jack, like, Thunder Punch just for the coverage. That would probably be a good idea in retrospect.
one thing that was nice about Gen 1 is that the, uh, the pokey flute that you get to, uh, wake it, awaken Snorlax in the story is a usable item, and you can play it in battle to wake up Pokemon, so you just keep it in your inventory and you have infinite awakenings, basically. That might have been part of the reason they changed it to a radio station in Gen 2. Uh, wake up. Wake up! Shadow, I'm breaking the capsule. Get out! It can't... I guess it just doesn't have any move... It probably... You know what? I'll bet it knows confusion. That's why it's not doing anything, because that won't affect me. Here's something interesting I learned the other day. Apparently, the, uh, the first gen on every console outsold the second one. Even though the first gen is usually considered the worst of the two by fans. What I mean by that is... Diamond and Pearl outsold Black and White. X and Y outsold Sun and Moon. And Sword and Shield outsold Scarlet and Violet. And that's a little surprising, again, because all of the, in all of those cases, the second batch of games is generally the fan favorite. Yes, I will learn Bite. That will replace Pursuit. In fact, Black and White are the uh, the worst-selling generation in terms of the Premier Core games. I, di I didn't see what it was coming out with. Beedrill, okay. Uh, Bug is gonna be neutral against me. The best-selling is still Gen 1. And the second best is, I believe, Sword and Shield. Oh, uh, yep, that hurt. Oh, that hurt a lot. Alright, uh, Goji, get him. Darian, uh, you don't really talk about Pokemon a lot. I assume you're not, like, a super fan of the series. What ones have you played, just out of curiosity? Jack and I have been going through the series on stream, which a lot of it, most of it, he has no experience with. I think he only played, like, the first two, maybe Gen 3. And then he basically stopped playing all the way until we did uh, Sword and Shield. Oh, that's a fighting type. Uh-oh. Does it have any fighting moves? It, se it seems like it's too low level to have any fighting moves. I don't remember Heracross getting anything amazing in terms of uh, fighting moves. It does get Mega Horn eventually, which is the only, like, good bug move at this point in time. Only really familiar with Gen 1, that's because I played Pokemon Stadium as a kid. Played Pokemon Pearl as an attempt to get into the series. Doesn't seem like an amazing place to do that. But then a lot of, for a lot of kids, Gen 4 was their first game, so and they love it, so what do I know? My experience, in case anyone has not been watching the Pokemon streams, my experience was that I played the first three gens a lot. By Gen 4, I was, I was kind of starting to think, okay, what are they doing with this series? This is starting to look kind of stupid. What are these evolutions? What's going on? This 3D looks bad. 
So I tried Gen 4, didn't like it, and then I saw more stuff that I considered kind, kind of dumb in Gen 5, so I just I stopped playing. I skipped Gens 5 and 6, and then I, along with a lot of people in my experience, came back for Gen 7. And I enjoyed Sun Moon. Then I later went back and played the ones that I missed, but, uh, yeah, that was my initial experience. Uh, I don't have any, like, uh, I don't have any ways to, like, beef up Shadow. He's just, what he's got is what he's got, and all he's got right now is Ember. It's interesting to see the difference. Hello, Glee. I was talking about the sales earlier. It's interesting to see the difference between sales numbers and, like, you know, the popular fan opinions. And it's interesting to see, like, the, just the different takes of, uh, like, how people reacted to a generation between whether they were, you know, casual or a really intense fan of the series. A big complaint that I hear about... Sun Moon has fallen out of favor. My experience, at least what I remember at the time of release, was that the, everyone was raving about it. Everyone loved Sun and Moon. And now, years later, I hear everyone like saying Gen 7 is their least favorite gen. It sucks. It's awful. And I hear one of the complaints people make about it was that apparently in, like, the promotional material leading up to Gen 7, they, like, spoiled all the game's content. See, which I wouldn't know because I wasn't following the promotional material at the time, so... And then there's also more valid, like, not time-limited arguments, like, uh, Gleam says he doesn't like Z-moves. People complain that Gen 7 is very, like, linear and handholdy. Which, yes, I won't argue, but, like, every Pokemon game is. Especially Gen 5, which people seem to love. Like, no one makes that complaint about Gen 5, but we, we just streamed it. It was incredibly linear and handholdy. I'm eating these Beedrills. Not in a good way. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit... I'm getting poked a lot. Uh, you know what? Sandstorm. Z-moves are not an amazing gimmick, but they're not an offensive one. They seem like they would be reasonably balanced. At least in theory. Dynamax seemed, like, very gimmicky, like it didn't have a lot of depth to it, a lot of potential depth. I'm glad that they brought it back for, uh, or that they pulled it back, rather, for uh, Scarlet Violet and had a gimmick that was more, you know, down-to-earth. Because Terrestrializing does have competitive depth, and I like that about it. I guess part of the problem with Z-moves is the same problem with Megas, is that they picked and choosed, like, what was allowed to get one. Although, at least, a, a lot of the Z- a lot of the Z-moves are interesting, whereas the Mega Pokémon... The Mega Pokémon, some of those decisions made no sense. Or rather, they were- they were made based on, like, they seemed like they were made based on selling figures and plushes, not on game balance. Why does Mewtwo get a Mega Form? Why is Tyranitar getting Mega Form? I love Tyranitar, but he didn't need it. Fly. Oh, right, a flying type. Of course. I don't have any rock moves. Well, that's because uh, 
Goji hasn't learned any yet. I enjoyed Dynamax. It was the first time I was able to successfully use Avalug on a hugely competitive scale. What are you talking about? Avalug's great! The, the champion of Paldia has one on her team. It can't be bad. What is your, uh, what is your defense of Dynamax, Gleam? Not that it needs defended, you're allowed to have your opinion, I'm just curious. It just seems like something that wouldn't have a lot of depth to me. You use it and then you get, like, a brief boost in, what, attack power and HP for one Pokémon? I'm trying to use this in Jim to power level uh, Shadow. I would like for him to evolve, but I think that's still a ways off. This is good. This is a four times weakness. Hound Dew. Oh, level 24. Never mind. We're coming up on it. We almost have a Hound Dew. Yanma. Made it to top 50 in the world on the ranked ladder with that Avalog, simply because its partner was a very distracting Gigantamax Lapras that they had to answer, and it normally set up the veil protecting Avalog further. Okay. So you use Dynamax for a setup Pokemon. Did it increase attack stats, or was it just HP? Yanma looks so big in this sprite. It looks so much bigger than it actually is. I also don't strictly have to fight all these gym trainers. I could go straight to the gym leader, but... I need the training. You know what? Because... Gleam is the one with return, right? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep him out. I'm gonna have my little Umbreon friend, so his return can get even stronger. Oh, that's right, those Dynamax moves as well. Somehow I forgot about that. Someone made a Pokemon fan game that has zombified Pokemon. Okay, I, I believe that. Is this recent? Remember Pocket Mortys? That came and went. Probably because it was a mobile game. I think it was a mobile game. Uh, I wish I had a way to set up in some way. I don't. I don't have those kinds of moves. I just have Ember. Uh, berries were in this game. I just haven't gotten any, I guess. Alright, great. I'm asleep. I'm confused. What are you gonna do now, Butterfree? You're gonna use confusion? Oh, wait. You can't. Whirlwind. Okay. Nope. She's gonna, just gonna 
get me the hell out of here. Oh, I really wish I had a rock move. Start up crystal clear, just get a feel for it. Gotta say, Houndour got ripped off. My Growlithe starter had a ripped moveset and came with a Firestone attached. Oh, you mean like the, the starting moves. Growlithe didn't get like uh, like an altered learn set from Vanilla Crystal. What, uh, what did it start with? Surely it didn't start with like Flamethrower or something, did it? This Butterfree, this Butterfree sucks. I'm glad I used Sandstorm. Which, I'll repeat, does one-eighth per turn, not one-sixteenth in Gen 2. Yeah, get out of here. Oh, it wasn't enough. Okay, Sandstorm will do it. Heracross. Uh, you know what? Flying. Get in there, Darian. Fire spin, crunch, bite, and the last move I forgot was for coverage. I started with crunch. That's nice to have. Set some zombie Pokemon sprites. Yeah. They they are zombies. There's like a human coming out of Snorlax's stomach? And there's a human inside of Muck, like, riding inside of it. That's bizarre. Oh, come on. Endure. Also chose to start in Lavender Town, which was kind of insane, as there was a free move tutor in the starting building. Isn't that, isn't that the same building where, like, all the utility trainers are? Or is there a move tutor, like, specific to Lavender Town? Let's try Shadow. Let's see if he can get back into, uh, a specific move tutor in the radio tower. Well, maybe I should visit them. Oh, wait, Scyther, Bugsy Scyther knows, uh... No Fury Cutter. Boy, I hope I wake up soon. Okay, good. Because Fury Cutter will be neutral on Shadow, and I don't want to let him get that built. Here we go. Uh, I don't think I can stop him from getting it built, actually. Well, now what? Uh, hmm. I don't have anything that resists Bug. Uh, hmm. It'll be neutral on everything. It's gonna be super on Sauce, and I don't think she's gonna survive, but... I kind of just don't want to... Okay, it stopped for some reason. Great. I, sh I should have counted on the AI being dumb. Silly me. Had a level 4 Fury Cutter and it used Quick Attack. Beedrill. Send and gleam again. If ever there was a horror Pokemon game, I think it would work best as more fun spooky than outright disturbing. Yeah. There tends to be like a little bit of darkness in each each like Pokemon, but not to the same degree as like Zelda. I also can't think of any time it ever got to the same degree as Gen 1 again. 
because Lavender Town left an impact on everybody who played that game. Lavender Town was the Pokemon equivalent of that Pal World NPC who tells you that, like, all their friends died and were eaten. Imagine Halloween versions of the original 151 Pokemon. That sounds like it could exist somewhere. If we're talking about, like, an official Pokemon game, I don't know how they would do a, uh... I don't know how they would do a horror-tinted thing for that. I think we talked about this recently. The only, uh... The only first-party Nintendo horror franchise, and no, Luigi's Mansion doesn't count, is, uh... I get, well, now Famicom Detective Club, with its new game with, like, the, the paper bag serial killer. It's not like there aren't horror games on Nintendo systems, especially the GameCube had, like, uh, was it Eternal Darkness? That was a big one. They were just second party, not made by Nintendo. Alright, we have four badges. We are a skillful trainer. We can now have more TMs. And for trainers who want to expand their culture, we advocate a trip to Ecritic City. Fast Ferry is a new service to quickly travel across the seas. Where was Surf in Gen 1? It was in the Safari Zone. That's a question. Gen 2 didn't have the Safari Zone. Is it back? I should go to... I should go to Fuchsia. I'm not doing as much exploring as I probably should. I'm sure there's a lot of cool stuff in this version of the game that I'm just not seeing. But uh, I, I don't plan on spending too, too long in this. Uh... Okay, where was I gonna check out? I was gonna check out... The Safari Zone in Fuchsia. Uh, before that, I want to look at that... Uh... Wait, I can start it? Can I start at Mount Moon? Can I start at Rock Tunnel? Or are they just added flight locations because there's Pokemon Centers there? Okay, Gleam said there's a Move Tutor in the starting building. Sorry, that was a uh, work thing. You may have noticed that this place can be okay. This is the this is the building. This is the this is the utility building. Yes, I know. Thank you. The radio tower was the house. What you live in the radio tower? I'm confused. Hello there. I'm just an old man, but I've got a rather large CD collection. I can teach your Pokemon some of these rare moves. Uh, okay. Mega Punch, Razor Wind, Swords Dance, Whirlwind, Mega Kick, Wondro, Body Slam, Take Down. Okay, a lot of normal moves. Bubble Beam, Water Gun. Are these Gen 1 TMs? Is that what all this is? Having a fighting type move could be good. Fisher. Yep, that's a that's a Gen 1 TM. Mimic Reflect. Bide. Skull Bash. Soft Boiled. Sky Attack. Thunder Wave. Psy Wave. Rock Slide. Oh, Goji can't I guess cause Goji wasn't in Gen 1, so it doesn't have Gen 1 compatibility. Alright. 
Uh, I wonder, does this cost anything? Let's give Snorlax a fighting move. We don't got that coverage. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's free and infinite. That's great. The radio tower is nice, but there's a debate on the morality of it. But progress is progress. Hey, where are the bodies? Wasn't this a cemetery? Where all, where all the bodies go? No, no, we're not going to worry about it. Okay. Here's a random Delrog fact. I was a staff member on the Creepypasta Wiki spin-off wiki. So any of the Creepypastas that were like a spin-off of an existing series, like Pokemon Creepypastas would go there. And I actually quite like Pokemon Creepypastas. I haven't like gone reading a lot of them recently, but... Something about like early Pokemon just lent itself really well to that kind of uh, that kind of thing. Just weird little video game horror stories. I recall one about uh, it was like some fan theory about the old man stomping around in uh, what's the Lieutenant Surge Vermilion City. Who was still- oh, Cataracts. Who was still there between Gen 1 and Gen 3, three years later. That did still, like, at the construction site without a building ever being built. And the author tied it into the, uh, the construction of the radio tower in some way. Where's the- hold on, wasn't that the- where am I? I'm in Celadon. Where's the TMs? Are you the TMs guy? Here are the TMs you can choose from. What's in set two? Roll out. Uh, that would... That would go good with defense curl. However, I already have, like, uh, I have Goji. He's gonna learn rock moves eventually. Dig would be nice. Double Team, Swagger, Sleep Talk, Sludge Bomb? No. You don't want Sludge Bomb in Gen 2. Alright, so the only one of these I really care about is Dig. Even though I probably won't go cave exploring. Let me see if I can teach it to a Goji just for the ground type. Stab. Sludge Bomb is really strong base power. It is. Oh, it's Poison type. No one wants Poison type in this gen. Besides, what what on my team can learn it? I, you know what? Now there's some things that can learn it. I'll bet Umbreon can learn it, since Umbreon was uh, originally going to be a Poison type. Which you can tell, because in part of its... Like, still Pokedex entry mentions that it sweats poison, and it has the uh, defensive typing that was very typical of early poison-type Pokémon. Because the Gen 1, the concept behind the Pokémon in Gen 1 was that they would, uh, they would poison the foe and then just tank damage until they went down. That was how they were designed. As flawed a concept as that was. Okay, good. Goji can dig. Uh, do I want to get rid of Bite? I kind of, honestly, Screech is probably coming in more handy than Bite. But I will want Crunch eventually when he's, like, evolved. Uh. Yeah, I'll get rid of Bite. I have other Pokemon for dark coverage. 
Obviously. Now, Sludge Bomb can probably be learned by Umbreon and... No, it can't. Never mind. It cannot be learned by Umbreon. It can be learned by Shadow. Which, okay. Something, I guess. I'm getting nothing out of Smogger Reversal. hope I don't need to teach anyone uh, Rock Smash. Yeah, Houndoom's attack stat is not great. I'm being forced to use, like... I, I, well, I guess I wasn't forced to use that on, on, uh, on Umbreon. I'm being forced to use Psychic. On uh, Umbreon or Snorlax, both of which are physical attackers. What was I doing? Fuchsia. Let's go check out Fuchsia. Sorry, one more thing I just remembered. I also want to get Thunder Punch for Snorlax just for the coverage. I want to have an electric move. Honestly, set 1 is probably better than set 2. Which is fine. It's nice to have a lot of, like, choice early in the game, instead of having to wait for 4 gym badges. Yeah, Thunder Punch. Again, not a special attacker. Probably not a good, not a good choice, but... I need an electric move in the party. Can Goji learn rollout? It's not very rollout chiller. It's not it's not a round Pokemon, but it is a rock type. Oh, it can't. Alright, I'll save that 2k. I just I just want a rock type. Even rock throw would be lovely. Give him a rock move. What are you doing? check the move tutor. Maybe, maybe Goji can, like... No, I, I, I got him at level 15. There's no way he already forgot a rock move by that point. Uh, Gen 2 movesets. Alright, fine. Fuchsia. I'm gonna check out Fuchsia, just to see if, like, the Safari Zone is in this. And then we'll go to, uh... Oh! I forgot this remix. This is a weird remix. Then we'll resume our, uh, our gym journey. Hello? Yeah! There's no time limit, and you get to use your own equipment now. Oh. Okay. So, they... This was not in Gen 2. Unless I'm misremembering. I don't think I am. I think... No, the Safari Zone was just closed in Gen 2. So they re-added it based on the Gen 1 map. But they didn't add the Safari Zone, like, system. 
They just let you come in here and just catch what you want using your own Pokemon and balls. And I'm assuming the rates are similar to, uh, it's just the Gen 1 rates. Since the goal of, part of the goal of this ROM hack is to make everything catchable. Alright, neat. That's cool. It's cool that the Safari Zone is back in, in some form. Let's go see, uh, let's go see how the... How bad the Kimono Girls are. Because Surf would be nice to have. I don't know who can learn it. Maybe Jack? I could Surf on Snorlax? I could grab a Chansey. Uh, well, if I wanted a Dratini, I would just, uh, I'd get one from the Dragon's Den. That'd be way easier. Of course, I need Surf for that first. You have lovely Pokémon. How do you know they're in balls? Well, this one isn't. I guess, yes, Gleam is a lovely little boy, but you haven't seen the rest of them. That's quite a level difference. Hmm. Oh, don't sand attack. Okay, good, it failed. I think I could do it. It's gonna be tough. Oh, how much, how bad Bad's bite gonna be? Oh, oh, that's bad. No, don't flinch. Miss, yeah, miss. Now dig. I see the trainers scale with their your badges. The majority of them do. Almost all trainer and trainers in the game do this, except for some exceptions, and the Kimono Girls are one of those exceptions. <sighs> I should have known that was gonna happen. Oh, it hurts. No. I'm not fast enough. Alright, I think we're gonna come back to the Kimono Girls. No, no. Cancel. Undo. Let's go to some more gyms. Let, let's work our way up to the, uh, the killer... The killer Kabukis. I'm sorry, that's not the same thing at all. They're not Kabuki actors. Gen 2 was a whole lot more Japanese than Gen 1. Actually, that's not that's not true. It was more classical Japanese. Because the, the region Gen 2 is based off is a lot more, like, historical. As opposed to Kanto being based off of uh, industrialized Japan. Like, the big city areas. Hello? Yes, I'm sorry, I save a lot. This place burned down, but no one ever dug around. I'm searching for any loot that survived. It's been a while since I played Crystal, so I don't remember how much of this is from Crystal, and how much of it is new to this particular ROM hack. Please don't burn. Because in Gold Silver, this room only had, like, two trainers, I think? Some people might question, okay, well, why don't the wild Pokémon scale with your level? And unfortunately, that would be kind of difficult because, uh... Like, what if you get a low-level Pokémon? What if you're trying to fill out the Pokédex and you want... You need, like, low-level Pokémon to train against, for example.
Will Yuzine show up? That's a good question. I'm going to guess no. Yuzine. What a weird name that dude had. Don't poison me. That's fine, you can self-destruct. You know what, I think I have an antidote. I don't want to go outside again. I don't want to touch grass. That Eugene guy comes sniffing around here a lot. What does he want to be here for? I have one antidote. Let's save ourselves a trip. I'm a little paranoid because I don't remember if there's Pokemon in here or what level they might be at. Gen 2 is generally pretty forgiving. In terms of, like, the levels scale very slowly. By the time you fight the Pokemon League, they're at, like, level 45. Alright, well, Yuzine is here. Are there, like, story events with him? My name's Yuzine. I've been on the trail of Pokemon named Suicune. Suisun? Sudoku. Suicune has to be here. About a year ago, I met a trainer similar to how I met you just now. What that trainer did to me, I don't even want to think about it. You talking about Red? It really has been a long time since I played Crystal in any format. Mystical Man. Oh, well now I wish I had Bite. Fine. Alright. This game did not have a very memorable story. They just kind of shoehorned this thing with, with Yuzine chasing Suicune around the game. It didn't really impact a lot of what was going on otherwise. Electrode. Uh, well, now I want Goji! God damn it, he's asleep. I remember in uh, elementary school when uh, there was that kid. You know, the one with the rumors whose uncle works at Nintendo? Who had, who had apparently heard information of some kind about Ruby and Sapphire. Maybe they had come out in Japan already or something. And he was talking about, uh, about how the next Pokemon games were going to be Ruby and Sapphire. And that's all he knew. So I thought, oh, they're making games about uh, Raikou and Entei. Because Suicune got one, and that was Pokemon Crystal. So now there's going to be two more named after Crystals. It's got to be these two. Never mind that they're red and blue, Ruby and, Ruby and Sapphire. I was so sure of that at that point in time. But it didn't end up being the case. It, it re they really did, did just make a game about Suicune and none, none of the others. Haunter. You know what? Let's keep going. Let's dig it. This dude and his whole team of, of Hypno-Pokemon. Why does he have an electrode? Is that supposed to be like... Is that something hypnotic related? Hello, Apple Canapple. 
No, there is no Kaijussi. This is this is a boy Gogeta. Gogeta, Gogeta, Gogeta. All that matters is I prove my worth to Suicune. Where could it be? And then the hole spontaneously opens in the floor. Not again, I was so close. What what does that mean? Okay, well here's Suicune, and here's the point that if I wanted to, the game's gonna let me soft reset. I think. No? Hello, friend. I think this crystal takes place after the original crystal. Is that the idea? I can't believe it. Suicune raced by like a blur right in front of my eyes. Again! The three great legendary Pokemon tests to allow them to get close. Something. Ten years. It's been 11 years now since I started my quest. Wow, you look exactly the same as you did back then. Okay, interesting direction for this game. So, I'm not going to shiny hunt for the Suicune, but something that this ROM hack does is it gives you an opportunity to save just before that you see... Just before you get gift Pokemon, or that you, uh are otherwise in a situation where a Pokemon's shiny would be locked in. I kind of expected it to do that here. I, I guess it doesn't, doesn't for us, the dogs, though. No, get out of here. I'm not gonna fight a rat. Nope, don't care, not getting a coughing. See, now I'm playing this like an actual Pokemon game. I'm trying to get all the items on the ground. Uh... I just wanted the ball. I gotta have that, like regular 20 HP potion. This is very important. Smoke ball. Okay, well, that's worth having. I would not attempt to get high off a coughing gas. That sounds like a bad idea. Then again, what does the Pokedex know? If you believe the Pokedex, then every Pokemon wants to kill you. Like, Poked Pokemon World is Super Australia. Yeah, Fungus, maybe. That is something that's always kind of annoyed me about the uh, the, the Pokemon franchise, is an unwillingness to uh, commit to, like, doing darker things. Because you have all this stuff in the Pokedex, but then you never actually see any of it in the out in the world. The world is all, like, happy and idyllic and utopian, and everyone's having a great time, except for the villains who want to change everything. But besides from them... No one's getting abducted by balloons in the Pokemon world. Here we go. Let's do the ghost type gym. We're well equipped for that. In the manga. Yes, I am aware of the, the Pokemon Adventures manga is quite a bit different from uh, the rest of the fr franchise. And I appreciate it for that. What do I want to do to the ghosts? Probably be best to dig, but I do also want to. I really want my Houndoom sooner than later. This will be a Shadow and Goji team-up gym. Speaking of Pokemon adventures, this game has 
playable characters from Pokemon Adventures in it. Like some of the uh, some of the selectable player avatars are uh, green or blue, the girl from Adventures, and uh, yellow from Adventures as well. I'm disappointed that Bite is a special move, but it worked. Oh, this guy's got a lot of Ghastlies. At some point, I'm not going to be able to continue just going gym to gym. I'm going to have to do some other form of training in between. I wonder at what point they expect you to fight the Kimono Girls and get Surf. Because normally, this would be the fourth gym is Morty here in Gen 2. And then you'd kind of... You'd have to do them after that to progress. Unless you went through the cave to... Uh, no, you couldn't do the ice gym then either, I don't think. Probably soon after this gym. Yeah, probably. Again, having Houndoom will help a lot. I am still on swap mode because I'm a little bit of a che cheaty cheater. I'm making an effort not to use it to, like, uh, swap Pokemon in battle, but... I wish there was, like, a half swap mode where you weren't told what the next Pokemon was going to be, but you had the opportunity to change yours between turns, that would be nice. Then I wouldn't feel cheaty. Ping. Had that in black and white? I don't recall that. Gleam, can you confirm? Medium Grace. Come on, one more level. Give us a Hound Doom. Maybe when I have a Hound Doom, I can take on the Kimono Girls. Because they're level 35, but they also only have one Pokemon each. What a spiteful move. That accomplished nothing for this trainer. Now I'm just gonna have to go back to the Pokemon Center after every fight. In the same discussion where I was talking to uh, Goji about uh, Pokemon sales, we were talking about general, uh, he, he looked up, like, the best-selling Game Boy Advance games. The Game Boy Advance was kind of a port machine. Now, there's a lot of original stuff on it, too, but I, when I think of a lot of the games on Game Boy Advance, a lot of them are ports, and that was also a lot of the best-selling ones. Like the Super Mario Advance series. There was the whole, like, NES Classics line. A mischievous in, in, the, in the gym. That they're actually using the new ghost type that they introduced in this game. That said, that's still kind of all that they can use, is, is the ghastly family in mischievous.
world's oldest take, I still think Cubone should have been Ground Ghost. There we go, get us a Houndoom. Mistrevious is a pretty fun gimmick in Gen 2. What, uh, what was Mistrevious' gimmick? How, how do you play Mistrevious in Gen 2? That's a, that's a, that's a nice little feature, that the following Pokémon comes down with you. Parasong Trapper, that makes sense. Was it... its signature move in Gen 2? Or did other, did other Pokémon like Lapras learn it? Alright, we have our Houndoom, which means the only party member left to evolve is Goji. Because poor Sneasel doesn't get an evolution yet, not till Gen 4. Considering how much damage Bite was doing... Well, then again, Hound Houndour was a special attacker, so that makes sense that Bite was doing something. And this is after the special split, so the ghosts have a lot more uh, special attack than special defense. Uh, that's so annoying! You're just inconveniencing me! Drevis. Uh, does Darien have any dark moves? I don't remember. You know what, Gleam? You got a dark move. You got something for this. Pursuit. Mistrevis looks like the halfway point between Vivian and Madame Flurry. I'm just saying, if Madame Fleury were a Pokémon, she would definitely be Miss Revis. Uh... Uh... It doesn't have a ton of attacking moves. It's just a status user. Unfortunately, I also don't have any real attacking moves other than Return, which will not affect it. I remember in actual Gen 2, Umbreon's move pool was so bad, but I really wanted to use it because there weren't any other Dark types, so I, it, it was just my Toxic user. It was the Toxic Staller. I didn't play competitively, I only played single-player, so it was miserable. You don't want to willingly use a Toxic Staller in single-player. <sighs> Stop that. Neither of us can damage the other. It's just a slap fight between two no-attack Pokémon. Better than Toxic in Gen 1? What was, uh, what was wrong with Toxic in Gen 1? The fact that you could, like, swap it out and turn it to normal poison? One gimmick I remember in Gen 1. It was not, I doubt it had any competitive use, but it was a uh, cool oversight, the fact that you could, uh, 
use Leech Seed, and it would stack with the, the Toxic damage stacking. Spite making me leave the gym after every single battle. Yeah, broken mechanics that aren't supposed to happen. That's the best part of Gen 1. That's the whole reason you play it. That's why Fire Red and Leaf Green suck. You take out all the broken shit and you just got a boring game. What do you mean I can't have 255 Master Balls? What do you mean I can't do the Mew glitch? Well, now the game just sucks! That was a frustrating decision in those games, the fact that you had to, uh... You had to go through the entire post-game just to unlock the ability to uh, trade with Ruby and Sapphire. Yes, rock move! Yes, 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 learn rock slide. Uh, is it a good time to get rid of hit? Yeah, probably a good time to get rid of head, but... Not only is it, is, is it a rock move, it's a good rock move. This was the best rock move in Gen 1. Gen 2 as well? Uh... When were more rock moves introduced? Rollout was introduced in Gen 2, but that's Rollout. That's not amazing. Ancient Power? Yeah, okay. Ancient Power... Well, Rock Slide is 75 base power, unless it wasn't early on. Ancient Power was introduced in Gen 2, and it was 60 power. I forgot I was cursed. Stone Edge was not introduced until Gen 4. Gen 4 introduced a lot of moves in general that filled out types that didn't really have moves. Yeah, 1 HP. Despite all the other problems with Gen 4, it did at least introduce a lot of stuff that frankly should have existed, like, way before Gen 4 came around. There was some small effort to fix the, the lacking move pools in Gen 2, but, like, it was so minuscule. Hey, Bug-type doesn't have any moves. Alright, we'll introduce Megahorn, but... We'll only put it on one Pokemon. Two Pokemon. Maybe, maybe, maybe Pinsir learned it as well. What have you got? Uh, nothing super effective. Well, no, he's got Pursuit. That's, let's see. 60 power will be super effective, so 120, but it's special. Versus 70 power physical. Let's try it. Only Heracross, that's what I thought. Ancient power was also really limited in Gen 2, as I recall. I don't even remember what could learn it. Was it Gen 2 or was it Gen 3 ancient power was introduced? Ancient power introduced in Gen 2. But who could learn it? Only the fossils? which you could not get in Gen 2 without trading from Gen 1.
What a shame that never returned. The ability to uh, trade with a past generation in both directions. Alright, the stupid gym full of spiteful ghosts forced us back to the Pokemon Center after every single encounter. I'm gonna take out my anger on Morty. You! Your gym trainers suck! I guess I'll open with Goji. Good of you to come. Here in Ecruteak, Pokemon have been revered. Said that a rainbow-colored Pokemon will come, come down. I believe that, so I trained all my life. I'm so close to the, the, the future that I meet the rainbow Pokemon. He says, even though this is apparently like 10 years later. He has made no progress in the past 10 years. Mm, let's give it a sandstorm. You know what? I probably should have gone, like, west immediately after I awoke the dogs. Is this a Nuzlocke or a casual play? This is this is a normal play of uh, Crystal Clear because my first time playing the game. I'm just trying out the ROM hack. It's pretty cool. I've done uh, Pokemon randomizers before, but I've never done a Nuzlocke. Consider doing one for Pokemon Yellow just as a way to, uh, like, cover all the games. But, uh, you know, Gen 1 isn't very fun to Nuzlocke, I have heard. Could I tempt you to try Sour Crystal? I'm pretty picky with the ROM hacks. I don't play a lot of them, just because there's so many of them. But, uh, what is Sour Crystal? Executor, Charizard, Marowak, Tyranitar, Donphan. Is that all the Pokemon who can learn ancient power? Because that's a lot, if so. I'm guessing most of those are through are through uh, breeding. Quality of life improvement. What is it? Sour Crystal? Yeah. I never played uh, the, the Gen 2 remakes. I never played Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I'll have to try those one of these days. Oh, no Shadow Ball. That's bad. That's gonna hurt. Oh. Alright, well. Dark resists that. I wish I could... I, when I press A, it'll send the Pokemon out immediately. I wish I could... Uh, I wish I could, like, look at stats or something. I need a plan. For this Shadow Baller. I've got mostly attack moves. Psychic would be super effective. I could, uh... I could sand attack as an emergency measure. Gleam can tank some hits. Let's see how well Shadow does first. I 
Uh, that did hurt. I didn't see how much it did to know if I could take another hit or not. Ah. Uh, all right. Gleam. Use the pocket sand. Yeah, 15 damage. I think this is his last Mon. What a, what a sad decision. To include a ghost-type gym leader. And to also only introduce one new ghost in Gen 2. Especially because they had so many good ideas for others that they could have introduced but cut. I'm still miffed that they didn't include the, the voodoo doll or the Zhangxi panda. That was such a cool evolution line in the beta. They were pure ghost, but, uh, you know, they could have been normal ghost. That would have been cool. We didn't get a normal ghost until the, what's it, the Hisuian... Uh, Zoroark. That's the one. I know I should be using Psychic, but I'm gonna be- I'm trying to be safe. I wanted to future-proof. Unfortunately, I only got one Pocket Sand in. Uh, 70 power physical versus 120 power special. Definitely don't want to use Haze now. Let's compare. Let's see how much the physical one does. Miss! Miss your attack! Acknowledge your- acknowledge my pocket sand. Uh, about the same. Uh. Alright, gonna have to be Jack with, uh... What can he do? I don't have a move that can hit on him. Thunder Punch. Alright, punch the ghost. Use the power of Hamon. I'm not good enough yet. I haven't been good enough for 10 years. Man, if it were a matter of being good enough, then Ash would have never seen Ho-Oh. Alright, Shadow Ball is a nice thing to have. It's the same coverage as Dark-type, more or less, but it is a physical attack. This is the official Pokemon League office. Congratulations on another gym. You're just blazing through these. Professor Elm lives in New Barktown and is known for his generosity. Okay. What what does he have for us? You don't normally get something from Professor Elm at this point in the game. Unless it's an egg. Am I going to get a nice egg from Professor Elm? Hello. Nice house you got here. I'm visiting. My daughter's adamant about becoming Professor Elm's assistant. I worry Crystal's getting hurt or sick, but I'm very proud that she's doing what she wants to do. Wait, no, I, that's me. I'm Crystal. I mean, I'm Zelrog, but I'm also Crystal. I can buy the- I guess I could buy this house. That's right. Because this is open world, you can choose where you start at. This is not my house. This is not my mother. This is not my beautiful wife. Okay, Route 27 has been modified to no longer require Surf. Does it require other... TMs? No, you can just walk to the right. Alright, that's good. 
TMs, HMs. The overworld has been heavily modified to not require as many HMs. Hello. Yep, nice to meet you. I have five badges. I have a friend that everyone calls Mr. Pokemon. He recently gave me an egg to study. Okay. Darn. Well, that's too bad. Oh well, guess I'm not getting an egg. We're almost caught up to the wild Sneasel level. Not quite, though. Uh, do I dare try the Kimono Girls again? I don't have an ice move on Sneasel. I do have a rock move. Maybe I should maybe I should take a crack at the flying gym. He's the first Johto gym. He can't be hard. I could go up Spre uh, Sprout Tower. That is full of trainers that don't uh they don't scale. I know that's two of the cases that don't. I guess anything that's tied to an HM doesn't scale. Because you're expected to get the HMs at, at like a certain number of badges, a certain strength. Alright, let's try out our new rock throw. The scaling has been very, like, gradual. We've actually kind of been keeping up. Just going straight from gym to gym. It's not going to last forever, but if I put the focus on, like, a Pokémon that is super effective... For the most part, I've been able to just keep going through these. I also keep having to go back to the Pokémon Center between every, every fight, but... You know, details! If only she had an I no, you know what? She has Thunder Punch. Uh, not Thunder Punch. I taught her Ice Punch. Which is, I believe, 75 power plus stab. It's also special, unfortunately. But it's gonna be four times effective. Teacher Ice Beam. I'd like to. Sneasel's special attack stat is like the lowest thing ever. I know. It's such a fuck up of a Pokemon. They ruined Sneasel just by inception. Talk to the guy in front of the Goldenrod City Game Corner. Okay, is this another one of those unique move tutors that you just kind of have to discover out in the world? Because I didn't know about that one in the radio tower either. You! Do you know Pokemon moves? Are, are you a CD collector? Should I teach a new move? Okay. Which move should I teach? That's some good moves. I like them moves. Uh, yeah! Sauce is gonna learn Ice Beam. That's... That's good. Okay, that's a 20 power increase. 75 to 95. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to teach Houndoom Flamethrower. And if Snorlax can learn Thunderbolt, then I'll teach him that, because currently he's my only electric coverage. Hey, he's not good electric coverage, but I need it.
As you can probably tell by my party composition, I'm not taking this playthrough that seriously. Oh yeah. Thunder God, Snorlax. I'm glad all this stuff exists in the game. And I'm glad I have chat to tell me about it, because I would never I would never have found this. I would never have talked to this random NPC. Oh god, it's it's gonna be so good to have something better than Ember. If you understand what's so amazing about this move, you've made it as a trainer. Power's not everything, kids. You need accuracy, too. No, not Azalea. This guy was in Original Crystal. He was? Did he teach you moves for $4,000? I don't remember him at all. It was a one-time tutor. Okay. Yeah, I pretty much always go back to gold or silver when I replay Gen 2. Because they've got the cloning... I know the cloning exists in Crystal as well, but it's harder, so I, I don't... I, I just... I just pick the easy one. Try using Super Rod and Slowpoke well. Might be able to get Slowbro that's over, over level 40. I'm good. This is... this is my final team. I went out of my way to get all of the uh, Dark Pokémon that I could in the uh, first stream. Which included a very unwise trek to Mount Silver before having any gym badges. If I were to change something, I would probably be using Alakazam instead of Snorlax, because, uh... I like the cheese of a uh, elemental punch Alakazam. But we also have a fire and well, we have a fire user on the team, so I guess fire punch would be redundant. Ice punch and thunder punch, but uh That's okay. We'll make do against Johto's shitty Elite Four with our uh our shitty Sneasel special attack stat. I did get the Psychic TM in Saffron, I'm, I'm aware of that. I, however, have no good Psychic users, so I had to teach it to Umbreon. It's nice of them to let you get two copies of Psychic in this version. Was that in Crystal? Did uh, Sabrina give you the Psychic TM, or is that added to this? Here's my flaming hot take. I hate that you have to... You don't have to go back to a Pokémon Center after every fight. Like, you have items that you're supposed to, like, collect and pay for and encourage you not to, but that costs money. No one wants to do that. I end up going back to the Pokémon Center after most fights, and it's really annoying. Especially because enemy trainers are never worn down. They're always at perfect health wherever they are and whenever they challenge you. I would like for Pokémon games to just ditch the, like... Just fully recover your, your team after every battle and make every individual battle actually challenging. That's my big mix-up for the series that I'd like to see that will never happen. Yes, no, I know. I got Mr. Psychic's TM, Debo Hype. I got both copies of TM29.
Oh, come on. Nope. Not doing that. Do over. Mulligan. Miss Rock Slide. Get out of here. Alright, the actual timeline now. Level 26. Cheater. No, uh No, shut up. You didn't see nothing. This is the actual timeline. Oh, mud slap. That's right, you get you get a ground type TM from this flying gym. What do you got? Do you have a Gligar? No, you have another Pidgeotto. You can get Surf early. From the Kimono Girls, from the Safari Zone. A couple of the HMs, it mentioned both the Kanto and Johto locations, but Surf, it only seemed to mention the Kimono Girls. Paint attack. Alright, a dark type move. Also special. So, also terrible, but, you know, it's coverage. I'll take it. Over Scratch. House to the right of the Pokemon Center. Okay. So it's still in Fuchsia, but they moved it out of the Safari Zone. Uh, I hope Dodrio doesn't have a Fighting-type move. They all have double team. Okay, that's a crit. That's good. You know what? Uh, hmm. I'm gonna use Sandstorm, because Sandstorm can't miss. Yeah, one-eighth health. Get out of here. Mind games. I'm so proud of that, but I know that I know that uh, competitive players are looking at me, just like patting my head, like "Good for you, you did a thing." And then I just switch to uh, I switch to Snorlax to use a. Th uh, okay, no, Sandstorm doesn't impact Thunderbolt, right? Just Thunder. Yeah, give him that Snorlax special attack stat. Oh. What an annoying opponent Faulkner is. Uh, is one thing to just have mud slap. They based his entire team around accuracy reduction. They gave him mud slap and they gave him all his Pokemon uh, double team. We managed, but boy, what an obnoxious thing to build a trainer around. Be glad it isn't modern Minimize. What's uh, what, what's changed about Minimize over the years? What does modern Minimize do? They doubled its evasion rise. Oh, I forgot about that.
Here's a bizarre fact. Let me make double sure I get this right. In Gen 4, and only Gen 4, Extrasensory Astonish and Needle Arm do double damage against a minimized target. Sorry, only in Gen 3, not Gen 4. It's so arbitrary. Like, the stuff like, uh... What's it, a Body Slam and Heavy Slam? Those make sense, because, you know, you're squishing the little thing. Gen 2, Stomp would do double damage. That seems like one that would always do double damage. I wonder why they changed that one. Pokemon League has deemed the Cerulean Cave an unsafe area. We can access Cerulean Cave at just six badges? Here's the question, who's gonna surf? Still a bizarre remix. My grandpa's the Safari Zone Warden. He's finally back from his trip, so he stocked up on rare items for the Safari Zone. Well, the Warden's house definitely looks different. Alright, that's an interesting way to handle it. boxes, or is that it? Yeah, I figured I would have to give it to Snorlax, but let's see. They just said thievery is fine. Well, no, she offered the items in the boxes, like, hey, look at all this crap. I can't use it. Why don't you take it? Uh, I could surf on Sneasel. Which I might do just because I feel like Snorlax has a lot more moveset potential. Whereas Sneasel does not have moveset potential. Both of their special attacks are crap. Well, Snorlax's is a bit is a bit better. Well, you know what? If I get like Earthquake or something, I'm gonna give it to uh I don't know what I'm gonna do with Sneasel. I got nothing to do on I got nothing to do with Sneasel. The question is if I want a water move on Snorlax or not. I don't have a water move on the team, so it would be good coverage. Uh I'm gonna give it to Snorlax until I don't need it anymore. I can always delete it with the move deleter. Gyarados. No, sorry, Jesse. I've got a full team already. So now what do I want to do? I could do this poison-type gym here. What are our options now? You know what? Let's go to Goldenrod. Let, let's bring my, uh... Let's bring my Submission Snorlax into the normal gym. Yes, I am aware that Faint Attack is... I'm aware that Dark is a special type. I've talked about that a lot over the course of these streams, is how Dark is pathetically useless. And that I'm a big dummy dumbo for using them. I just like the type. It's such a baffling decision that they made Dark a, uh, a special type. Given that every Dark type move is physical in nature, like Bite and Crunch. And that every Dark type is a physical attacker. 
go do the rocket bases. That that's like the worst part of the game though. I hate I hate fighting Team Rocket in Pokemon games. I was aware of a couple of like jokey insert optional bosses in this game. How tough is he? Does does he scale with level? Come on, don't miss! High 50s, early 60s, so no. That's, I kind of figured that would be the case for optional boss characters. I don't know how well this submission plan is going to pan out at level 21. It would help if the first one didn't miss, for sure. I have to switch because I'm so down on health. Obligatory reminder that uh, Ferret, Furret, is six feet long. Furret is as big or bigger than you are. Oh god, that did nothing. <sighs> Man, I know Umbreon doesn't have an attack stat, but come on. I'm gonna have to teach it like Toxic, just so it has something to do. How much is Psychic gonna do? Not a lot, I know, because it's Umbreon, but... Yeah. I may just I may eventually just have to like toxic and moonlight. I looked at Umbreon's special attack and it was comparable to Snorlax's. Has that changed? Special attack 38. Uh, 41. Yep, Snorlax is get is Snorlax is, is growing a little bit more. Not much. It I I didn't notice that it defense curled. All right. There should be a negative effectiveness type. Normal type should attack rock type and take damage from it. Imagine how that would affect switch-ins. What a crazy change that would be. Please don't miss. Okay, good. I was not paying attention to how much I was letting it defense curl. Why do you need three furrets? It's still my fault for using, like, Pokemon with no attack stats in two-turn moves. I'm letting this happen, but man... Just... Can you let me kill you? Please? Pretty please?
I'm also fighting way above level. This whole, this whole, th this whole thing was an effort in, in futility. You know what I don't have? I don't have healing items. Mainly because I'm not playing the game. I'm not, like, walking around and fighting items on the ground. I'm just going straight from gym to gym. Yeah, get burned. Yeah, take special attack damage. Keep defense curling, it won't matter. Alright, well that was a lot more trouble than I anticipated it being. Let's go to the poison gym instead. I kind of want toxic now. I'm not ready to abandon the idea of going to the gyms yet. I'm, I'm not going to interrupt us for a training arc. You know what? We've been going for over two hours. Maybe after the next gym. We'll just, we'll get to wherever we feel like ending the stream, and then I'll do a little bit of grinding off-stream like I did last time. I'll, I'll juice them up by, like, five levels each or something, and that, that'll carry us for a little while. Alright, this is the gym with all the fake Janines. And I want to use Goji. Other Pokemon need the leveling more, but I got EXP all. I'll be fine. I need Toxic just so Umbreon can do something. I forgot that Gen 2 has the... They actually use the uh, remix of the Gen 1 theme when you, when you uh, play in Kanto. And that's pretty cool. What is stronger? I think Dig is a little bit stronger than Rock Slide. Pokemon. Dig. I know it was 100 power in Gen 1 and then they nerfed it, but did they nerf it to like 60 or 80? Okay. Yeah, this is the bad gen for Dig. It was 60 for Gen 2 and Gen 3, and then it went back up to 80 for Gen 4. That's probably one of the most changed moves in terms of attack power. Alongside Leech Life and Tackle. Tackle was such a bizarre one. Because it started at 35. Went up to 50 for Gen 5, and then I think it, it's since come back down to 40. Uh, Ivysaur, you know what? Do some flying type. Let's get Darien some experience. Not the best thought-out plan. Throwing out Sandstorms and then switching to non-rock Pokémon, but... It's fine. It'll be fine. Ah! Gleam, did you see the McDonald's posting? Did you see that they're doing some weird cross-promotion? With the uh, Hello Kitty X Yu-Gi-Oh! is the current batch of Happy Meal to toys. Which is weird, 
But it's also not that weird, because Hello Kitty just kind of crosses over with everything under the sun. It's kind of always done that. Oh, do not kill. Ah! Fine. Bad. Bad choices. I thought the sandstorm had one more turn. I thought it would just die and I'd get free experience. You see how long I spent thinking about using three not very effective moves? Jack wants to learn Belly Drum. <clears throat> That's tempting. That's real tempting. Not tempting enough, though. I don't think I need Belly Drum for a, a non-competitive, like, single-player campaign. Oh good, she doesn't have a Venusaur yet. Ivy Sword used Smell Nice. What a bizarre move. Is there any actual utility for Sweet Scent? Does anyone ever use that move? Like, why would you ever? I granted, like, Defog didn't exist until Gen 4. Were there other ways to deal with, like, Accuracy rate? Yeah, there was Haze. There's no reason to use Sweet Scent when Haze exists. To get to deal with someone like spamming Double Team. Or Smoke Screen. You know, it's kind of bizarre that Smoke Screen works like Sand Attack. And it lowers the opponent's accuracy, rather than raising the user's evasion. Because that's how you use a smoke screen, right? You drop it around yourself. It's more like pepper spray. That's a Pokemon move. That's an untapped idea for a Pokemon move. The, the habanero pepper in Gen 9 should have had that. It's a move called pepper spray. Wait, are you Janine? No, you're not. Shut up. Cindy. Uh, please don't know. Please don't know Earthquake. Tailwag. That's a move that didn't really translate properly. Oh god, it's super effective, they say. Alright, it's got fighting moves. Well, this isn't happening. What are our other options? I could use a shitty Psychic. I could use a shitty Surf. I could use a shitty Ice Beam. There's so many possibilities. Let's try Shitty Psychic first. This is a bad idea. Let's do it. One thing I, I can always count on for Umbreon. He can take a hit. What are some Pokemon that you guys think should be typed differently than they are? I've always been really annoyed that uh, Luxray was not Dark Electric. 
because it looks like such a dark electric type. Please do not paralyze. Cubone should have been ghost, uh, ghost ground, because it's only encountered in Lavender Tower, which is in as a ghost. I will specify. On well, Gen One, in Gen One, it was. God, damn it! God, damn it, Bobby! Surely paralysis cannot affect my mind powers, right? Scratch. They changed that. Yeah, they did change it in yellow version, but I'm talking about Gen One. Like uh, it is Gen One, but the the original games when all the Pokemon were like conceived. When Cubone was conceived, it was only encountered as a ghost, and also it's wearing it's wearing a fucking skull. Also, also, they just, they needed more more ghost types. Just make Cubone a ghost type, damn it. We talked about uh, Huntail and Gorobis earlier. Who were, I guess, at some point planned to be Water Dark and Water Psychic. And darn it, they should have been. Especially for how much effort it takes to get those in Gen 3. They're really underwhelming Pokemon. Well, this is not great. I guess I'll try the same strat. Oh, it knows double t double kick. That's not good. How many sand attacks can I get in? One? Cool. Cheating. I'm a cheaty cheater. Let's try that without the crit. It's not fair. My sand attack can't crit. I can't get two stages. Imagine if you could. Imagine if status moves could crit. I, for I forget when crits became 1.5 times damage. I want to say Gen 5? Because in the early games, they were 2 times damage for a critical hit. I don't like the idea that I'm fighting a Nido King, so I'm gonna get as many sand attacks as I can, and he still got a crit, so three. Three sand attacks. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There goes my Psychic user. My other options are Ground, and I, I guess Psychic. No, I have Surf, too. Let, let's try to Surf it. The movesets they have go towards that. You're talking about the Huntail and Gorobis. Originally, in the beta, uh, what was it? Girafferig was not normal psychic, it was normal dark. Which seems like it works better for the, like, two halves dynamic it's got going on. Miss! You've been sand attacked three times! What are you doing hitting your attacks? Miss! Miss! Ah! Dunsparce is another one that should have had another type. Dragon or ground. Ground would have made sense, given that it's supposed to be like a burrowing snake. That's what it's meant to be. And we hadn't had a normal ground type. I 
I also needed an evolution. Coldest take in the world. Maybe this was dumb of me, but when I saw Drampa, I was kind of hoping that was a... Uh, I was hoping that was a Dunsparce evolution. They have this a similar color scheme and the same kind of derpy look in their eyes. I was really hoping that Dunsparce turned into a giant normal type cool looking dragon. But it didn't. Still don't have a normal ground type. I feel like one exists. What about uh, Bunnelby? Isn't, the, isn't that normal ground type? Not but the evolution Diggersby. The one in the middle is not her. I think this is her right here. So let's go talk to this one first. Lasses in this gen looked like they had attitude. Like they were so ready to take you on. Why, why am I still using Gleam? No offense, Gleam. You kind of suck right now. You, I, I need Toxic. Let's get Darien out here. Let, let's, let's fly these plants a little bit. You know what else I could have done? I could have... Uh, Another option for a party member would have been Sandy the Dragonite. But I kind of already have a full team. Unless I were to abandon Shadow, but man... He's a dark type. I can't do that. If I had the option, I wish you had the option to start with pseudo-legendaries. It would have been cool to start with, uh, with Pupitar. Sorry, Larvitar. But I guess if that were the case, then everybody would pick those. Replace Sneasel. No! I know Sneasel sucks, but... They're my dark types. I have to love them. No one else will. It is tempting. You can use a super rod in the in the pond in Meridian Forest. That's an interesting place to put Dratinis. I could also just surf to the you know the dragon's lair where they're everywhere. Back to bird. Oh, starting with pseudo legendaries. Where do you get the super rod? You get it from the same location as. Well, in vanilla Gen 2, you get it from the same location you do in Gen 1. So you would have to, like, trek out to that house first, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd have to go south of Lavender and through some, uh, through some trainers. Crit? Give me a crit, come on. Be a pal. Man. You can surf around most of them. You don't start the game with surf. We're talking about, like... We're talking about starting the game with a Dratini. 
So you'd be starting with, like, nothing. Use my mind powers! They're very weak, but they're good enough for you! I don't know why Skeletor has mind powers. I wasn't really even Skeletor. In this game, you must get the old rod and good rods first. Okay. Don't think I want quick attack. Well... You know what? I will take quick attack, because pursuit is gonna be completely and totally useless on this Pokémon. Be very easy to win with the Dratini early game using the Lavender Move Tutor. Yeah, you'd have Dragon. I, I don't think it's that bad early game. It would be nice to speed things up. Talk to the Dragon's, Dragon Master in Dragon's Den. You might get a Dratini with extreme speed. Let's see if we can beat Janine before anything. This one? No, it's one more. No, that is, that's the right one. This is gonna be a shit show. Foo, 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 foo. I've never understood how that was supposed to translate. How, how do you laugh in foos? Oh, great! She knew I was gonna start with a ground type. Well, you know what? That's okay. I got Rock Slide. Probably don't have the health to be spending a turn on a Sandstorm. I probably should not be doing that. In fact, I'm also... Even though Crobat does not have good defense, I'm also not gonna one-shot it. Gonna need at least two rock slides. Okay, three rock slides. Thankfully, it cannot hit Goji. Well, there went all of Goji's health on one Pokemon. What else do I have that I can use? I'm at I'm at I'm so under leveled for this that now I have to be cheaty. Now now I have to use switch mode. Uh Ariados. I think this will be our last gym today. Then maybe I, maybe I will go get, uh, maybe I will go get Sandy the Dratini. Maybe I'll go do that after this. Do I have to have beaten Claire to get said Dratini? Coffee. Uh, what can I do against coughing? Not much. Not much that's specifically tailored to coughing, anyway. Can Goji outspeed it? I'm gonna guess no. I'm gonna guess the fart balloon is faster than my rock creature. Well, let's try. Nope, I'm faster. All right. It's not gonna one-shot it, but do a good chunk. Crit even. And there goes Goji. Larvitar's stats are so bad until it's fully evolved. 
They can't be that bad. You know what I love about Larvitar and Pupitar? Stats aside, they have a move pool, which in Gen 2 is incredible. It's amazing to have a Pokemon that learns, like, Rock Slide and, and does it learn Earthquake? I think it... I think it learns Earthquake pretty, re pretty like, quickly as well. And Bite and Crunch and good attacking moves. Have you seen Lantern? That Pokemon has such good coverage because of its own typing. Huh? I'm sure that's correct. I'm, I'm not connecting what it has to do with the previous conversation. This tanky fart balloon. You know, it's really ambiguous what coughing is exactly. At this point, I'm, I, it, it seems like it's balloon-like. Like a, a fuzzy, poisonous flesh balloon. It looks like it should be poison rock. It looks like a floating rock, but it's not. Okay. I wish you would have done that when I was digging. Oh, well, I don't get... Oh, I don't get EXP for that? I guess I don't have EXP all. No, it, that doesn't exist in this game. And I haven't gotten a uh, EXP share. In the original game, I would get that for, uh, beating the Red Gyarados and going back to Mr. Pokemon. I didn't necessarily say Larvitar is good because of its move pool. I'm just saying for, especially for, like, a casual single-player playthrough, it's so nice to have moves. I'm going all in on Pocket Sand. This is its last- this is her last Pokemon. I'm gonna make it just garbage. It's not gonna hit anything. Unless it uses Foresight, then- then it will, it will get to hit one move. Is it gonna- is it gonna secure the Toxic on me? Yes, it is. Hello, Jelly Supreme. I'm enjoying myself well enough. I've gotten through another four gyms on this stream? Honestly, I thought I would get through more. It's been slower than I expected it to be. You confused Foresight with Mind Reader lock-on. Oh, right. Foresight is the one that lets you hit, uh, like, immune types. Here's Soul Badge. That's another potential translation gaffe. I've heard it suggested that the Soul Badge and Marsh Badges have, like, their name swaps? Names swapped? I don't know if there's any accuracy to that statement, but... Given that the Soul Badge is the Poison one, and the Marsh Badge is the Psychic one, it kind of makes sense. The only connection that psychics have to marshes that I can think of is that Yoda lives in one. That's about it. Alright, seven gym badges. The Pokemon League is deemed the Cerulean- yeah, I know. I, I didn't plan on going to Cerulean Cave. I guess I could if I wanted to go fight Mewtwo, but, like, that sounds like it would be a dumb idea at this point. 
Here's a question. Is Mew under the truck? Fan games do like to do that. Hold on, I gotta investigate this. This is important. Although I guess I can't because I don't have strength. Oh, that's right, this is Gen 2. There is no truck. Who are you? Are you just one of these, like, wandering trainers who likes to battle? I collect Pokemon. Do you have Krabby? No, I'm good. He's got, like, spiky Yu-Gi-Oh hair. Would you like to buy an SS ticket for 10,000? I'm good. Yeah, this is Gen 2. We don't have the SSN, we have the SS Aqua. However, this opening is new. You wouldn't normally be able to go out here, so I wonder what's over, over here. I'm gonna take a look at this and then I'm gonna go get Dratini. There it is! Oh, actually, I do have strength. We know what's going to happen, but just for the sake of showing it off on stream, we got to do this. I wonder what level it's going to be. Maybe, f like, 50? Can I investigate the truck? It's a truck. wonder what it's doing out here. Was the Pokedex? Oh. Oh, no. You made it roaming? Info. Search. Event. Complete Mewtwo quest. Oh, this is a whole thing. I, th I thought I'd just, like, meet it, and it'd be like, Hello, I'm here, I'm Mew, and then I could catch it. No, that would be too easy. I see. Can't have anything. Uh... Who's my surfer? Jack is my surfer, so I gotta hold on to him. Goji is four levels from evolving. He's almost there. But because he's my highest level right now, I'm gonna... I'm gonna store him for just a moment. Man, I'm gonna have seven Pokémon that I'll have to juggle. By the way... Uh... What's that? How do I get up there? I, I want the shiny, I want the item. There's not supposed to be an item up there. Also, is this... I never talked to any of these. Is, is this encounterable, or is this just... Seems to want you to follow it up the cliff. Oh. Okay. Can I do this on any cliffs, or just this particular cliff? Mount Rose. Where? Okay. New the location. New mountain added. I'll bet there's like a bunch of Gen 1 Pokemon there or something. Maybe some legendaries? Maybe this is where Moltres lives now? What a bizarre choice that you can just jump up that particular ledge for some reason. And not any of these others. 
Okay, well, there's something up there to indicate that you can get up there, at least. That's, that's good game design. I am a little curious about Mount Rose, but not enough to go explore it now. What did I just get? I got TM-46. Thief. Okay, well, I don't really need that. Hello, Magikarp. I'm good. I don't need a Magikarp. I'm not here to catch them all. I'm just here to catch some. Hello, what do you have to say? You have proven yourself. You may enter. Uh, thanks, stranger. Oh, no! D immediate trainer battle? I mean, I did enter uninvited. I don't know what that old man was talking about, but come on. Well, you gotta gatekeep the dragon's den. Dratini has some not great stats. I remember Dratini always being a pain to train. Mostly in Gen 1, because all it got was rap. It got rap, and eventually it got slam, which was like 75 accuracy or something. Oh, that's right, Twister hits flying Pokemon. I think, I think, like, when that happens, they do, like, extra damage, too. Am I gonna have to fight a bunch of trainers to get to this Dratini? The Shrine Ahead is home to the master of our Dragon User Clan. You're not allowed to just go in. Excuse me while I just go in. Also, was this always the music here? I think I made the same comment during our Gen 2 playthrough. Because I usually play games with audio off. But man, this music... If you can call it music... Do I need Whirlpool? Please tell me you, remo you removed the Whirlpool. They didn't remove the Whirlpool. I don't have a Pokemon that can Whirlpool. Am I gonna have to settle for a non-extreme speed Dratini? I think I got the HM, because I did go to the Ice Cave. No, I didn't. Now here's the question, do I want to just get a normal Dratini, or do I want to go through all of the effort of getting Whirlpool so that I can then get this particular Dratini? Oh, and I got rid of my Digger. I can't fly out of here, can I? No, I can't. We know where it's at. Let's go run and get Whirlpool. Man, we, we like, walked past it when we were in the ice cave, because I was so focused on getting Sneasel.
Do I have any Pokemon that can even learn Whirlpool? I don't think I'd have to catch something. I could catch a Dratini to teach Whirlpool to get inside to get the Dratini that I actually want. This is optional, by the way. Uh, I didn't go to the left of town, but left of Blackthorn, you can just walk straight to the, uh, Mahogany. You no longer have to traverse the ice cave to get there. Get out of here, swine -up. Unless Whirlpool moved, which I hope it didn't. Uh, let's see how well I remember the layout of this place. Probably not very. Where is the room that I want? Is it up a level? Did I already go past it? That is Waterfall, I believe. That's Waterfall. Did I forget where Whirlpool is? It's not in here, is it? HMO6. Is an HM introduced in Gen 2? It is at Team Rocket's hideout. Okay, yes, I did just forget where Whirlpool is. Well, I got Waterfall, so that's, that's out of the way. You know what, though? I think we're good. I think we're good on, on Whirlpool. Here's what I'll do. I'll take care of that and also do a little bit of grinding off-stream. And then I'll come back and I'll either have Sandy the Dratini, or we'll immediately go and get Sandy the, Sandy the Dratini. That will be the plan for next time, but I think I'm done for now. We're almost at three hours, and it's hot today, so I don't really want to keep going. Uh... Probably won't do anything tomorrow, because it's going to be even hotter. And tentatively, we'll be doing something with Jack on Sunday and maybe Monday, because we're both off on Monday. I want to finish Sly 3. We're so close to that. Thank you for watching today. And I will see you guys for the next stream. Adios.